This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. You know it, I know it, translation matters. In this episode, Keith Johnson and I demonstrate how small changes from one Bible translation to another can result in some pretty big missed opportunities. It's episode two of The Name of God, Pure and Simple, because it's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. Hey, Shabbat Shalom to our fans. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. Well, tonight you are in for a treat, let me tell you. Keith Johnson joins me on this stage to explain how the Bible can be so simple yet so rich as he takes us on a deep dive into the innate simplicity, that is, of God's name and reveals the infinite meaning and power behind it. Now, one person who heard the Almighty himself proclaim his own name was Moses. And you can see what he looked like this month on the astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar. Yes, you can. Uh, we are on the second Shabbat of the 10th month and on the Gregorian calendar, we're already halfway through December, can you believe it? Which means we need to talk about year-end matters with my co-host, the Chief Operating Officer of Root Awakening International, Ted Clayton. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for letting me be here today. Ladies and gentlemen, call your friends, call your neighbors. You're not gonna wanna miss a single moment of this teaching with Keith Johnson tonight on Shabbat Night Live. Shabbat Shalom. Indeed, we're gonna talk about more of uh, what Keith has given us here in a minute, but uh, to bring Keith in, uh, you know, that. You know, people have to fly in. Well, Keith is local, but he drives in, and we yeah. like to give him a gift for his uh, for coming here and, and spending his time with us. Yes. And also, when people fly in, I mean, there's hotels, there's uh, car rentals sometimes, and of course, we want to honor the folks who come in here and help us to basically give more time for Michael to heal up. And yes. they do that by coming in here and doing series with us, and we really appreciate it, and we can only do that because of our partners. And that's where giving comes in. And yes. you know, we're planning this year coming up here, what guests are we gonna need to bring in? Because yes. Michael is healing up, but yes. he's not there yet. So we're, we are gonna have to bring in some more guests. So how many can we bring in? How are yeah. we gonna do it? Uh, and you know, that's where year-end giving comes in, because we need to plan those things now before December 31st. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, listen. We cannot stress enough that we cannot do this ministry without you. Michael just really wants to thank each and every one of you uh, for doing what you do, for standing with him, standing in the gap. And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you right now, Michael is getting better every single week that I see him. And he is just, he's so thankful for you. You know, Michael has, uh, through the years, through 40 or 50 years, quite honestly, been studious. He has uh, been doing things like writing the chronological gospels and teaching the word. Ladies and gentlemen, there is not a greater speaker of the truth than Michael Rood. And we stand with him and we appreciate you standing in the gap with us because we are here doing God's work with Michael. And I can tell you right now that there is no greater profession in the world than working in ministry and working for the kingdom. And we are so honored to do that, but we cannot do that without you. And it's at this time of year that some of you out there are saying, okay, what am I gonna do? I either have to give to taxes, give to the government, or can I put that money to better use somewhere else? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you honestly, there is no better place to sow your seed of donation than a Root Awakening International. We go to every continent in the world. Matter of fact, Scott, we even go to Antarctica. And people are actually even watching us at the McMurdo station in Antarctica. Really? That's something I didn't know. Absolutely, absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please, 
prayerfully consider donating to A Root Awakening this year. Your money goes to take the gospel to every corner of the world. It helps us to do new initiatives. Indeed. Like the, like the new social media things. We right. don't know about all this uh, censorship that's been happening lately. Right. And we are having to go on even more platforms. Uh, tell us a little bit about those. Well, you know, Michael's a rebel. And oh, so yeah. when you're a rebel uh, and you're speaking against uh, the 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 traditional norm, uh, you've got to go to places that maybe are a little unconventional. And right. so, you know, YouTube, yes, we're on YouTube right now. Yes, we're on Facebook right now. But we don't know how long that's going to be because right. people don't like the, the voices that come against the, the mainstream right. narrative. Exactly. And so we have to uh, look at other avenues, like you were saying. So Rumble. We're on Rumble. What's Rumble? So if you go to rumble.com and look for A Rude Awakening, uh, you'll find us there. Uh, that is basically a YouTube-like platform that has no censorship because there's no advertising. So that is a great place to go. So no holds barred there. You can see anything, all kinds of uh, controversial stuff we even talk about here. Yes. Uh, like some of our uh, preparation series that we're planning for next month, uh, we can't have on the stage because some people aren't gonna like it on YouTube and we have to find different places to put that. Right. So it's gonna be on Rumble. So that is our no holds barred uh, platform there. Also Discord, uh, another place where we can talk to each other without having the conversations uh, squashed. Yes. So things like this. And also, um, you know, year in giving not only helps us uh, to, to, to get ready for those type of things and have the folks who help us put those things on there, uh, but also Passover. You yes. know, we don't know whether Michael's gonna be ready for Passover or not. We, we honestly don't know. So yes. we can't say, yes, he's gonna be there, or no, he's not. We are going to have a Passover though. Yes, And so absolutely. we need to plan for that type of thing. Yeah. And are we, are we gonna bring in folks for that? So yeah. we really just need to know now what we're gonna be doing for this next year and you can help us do that. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for everything you do for this ministry. Thank you. Michael loves you, and he just, every week, he wants me to say to you guys how much he appreciates you and cares for you, and we just thank you so very much for your year in giving. And you know, someone who's given to us uh, a lot this year is, is Keith. Uh, oh, Keith yeah. Johnson has given us a lot of his time. Absolutely. He's afforded Michael all kinds of time to get well by coming here and doing series with us. Yes. Uh, which is what he's doing tonight. And uh, as sort of a bonus, to what we're doing here. Uh, he had some extra things to say, and we said, well, why don't we do a love gift? And he said, yeah, great idea. Michael wants me to do a love gift anyway. So that is what we did. So there's love, the love gift this month from Keith Johnson is Grandma's Bible. And I just wanna read a little bit on the back here. It says, Grandma's Bible offers a compelling and entertaining perspective. It is entertaining. Whenever Keith's up here, it's entertaining. Always, <laughs> always. That confirms the eternal truth that the name of God is indeed forever and for everyone. So yeah. that is the love gift teaching you will get for a gift to this ministry of $50 or more. Uh, Keith said, you know what? Just take it. I want to give to the ministry. When folks give to your ministry, give them my teaching. So Incredible. he did that just selfishly, uh, unselfishly. Yes. Uh, and so thank you very much. Selflessly is a word I was looking for. Yeah. So thank you very much, Keith, for doing that. For a gift of $100 or more, you'll get that teaching and you'll get this beautiful replica of an 8th century BC coin. It's called the Megiddo coin. It's a very famous coin. Uh, it's, it has the ancient Hebrew seal on the front with the uh, with the uh, Lion of Judah on the front and some Paleo-Hebrew. It's a wonderful uh, conversation piece. You can keep this on your keys or for a keychain. And we have something else coming up in the uh, $300 level uh, gift in a second here. But for $100 or more, you'll get that and Keith's uh, teaching, plus this replica of some pottery that was found in uh, at the Dead Sea Scrolls site, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were actually found until you find a replica of not only the pottery, but also of the scrolls that were found. So that's kind of a neat thing to have on your mantle as well and start a conversation. Outstanding. And for a gift of $300 or more, we also have that matches the keychain. You can see it is a beautiful necklace, sterling silver necklace with the Megiddo coin on the necklace. Wonderful thing. Uh, wear it on Shabbat, wear it wherever you like, and people can say, what is that? That's beautiful. What is that writing on there? Well, that's Paleo-Hebrew. Why are you wearing Paleo-Hebrew? And that's of course, it. open door to your faith, and you can start sharing uh, what Michael teaches us here on Shabbat Night Live. And real quick, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to want to miss next month's teachings. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael has asked us specifically because of this day and time, with all the disasters that are taking place, with all of the unrest that's happening, with all the uncertainty within governments. 
He said, you guys have got to do a preparation series. You've got to help our partners know what they need to do and how they need to act if things go bad. And we're going to do that next month in January. Ladies and gentlemen, you won't want to miss a single moment of that. Andy, the revelation preparation. That's so right. Get ready for that. All right, so Keith Johnson and I demonstrate how small changes from one Bible tra translation to another can result in some pretty big missed opportunities. It's episode two of The Name of God, Pure and Simple. But first, it's The Kiddush with Michael. Stay tuned. Certain things in our world have the same meaning in every culture and every language, like a smile from one person to another, and the eternal name of God. Using examples from his ministry travel around the world and some intriguing discoveries in his grandmother's Bible, Keith Johnson demonstrates how the name of God is universal, regardless of place or time. My grandmother never shared with me that she read the Bible. Uh, I never heard about the Bible my whole life, but this is her Bible, it's her family Bible. It's the 1901 version, and we've already found some real cool nuggets <laughs> regarding the name that are in there, to be honest, that I didn't know until yeah. I cracked open her Bible. In this month's Love Gift teaching, Grandma's Bible, Keith Johnson offers a compelling and entertaining perspective that confirms that the name of God is indeed forever and for everyone. Right now, for a limited time, you can get your copy of Grandma's Bible by donation. Donate a $50 love gift and we'll send you Grandma's Bible on DVD or Blu-ray. Or for a donation of $100, we'll send you Grandma's Bible plus a replica Megiddo coin keychain and a collectible Dead Sea Scrolls pottery model containing an excerpt from the Scroll of Isaiah. Or as a special offer for a donation of $300, we'll send you Grandma's Bible the Megiddo coin keychain and Dead Sea Scrolls pottery, plus a breathtaking necklace matching the Megiddo coin keychain featuring an ancient Hebrew seal dating back to the 8th century BC. These are special gifts from Michael Rood to thank you for your support. Make your donation today and receive the $50 gift, the $100 gift, or the $300 gift. Don't wait, Grandma's Bible is available only until December 31st and supplies are limited. Call now to receive your gifts, 888-766-3610 or get your gifts online at monthlylovegift.com. The Chronological Gospels Bible is changing lives all over the world, putting everything the Messiah did in exact chronological order and explaining the behind the scenes truth of what the Messiah did, when he did it, and why the timing of it all means everything. And now, the Chronological Gospels can be easier on your eyes. The larger print edition features 40% larger type, and every page appears exactly the same as the original, so you can follow along with others who have the regular size version. The Chronological Gospels larger print edition also has wider margins to write notes, and the premium quality paper means you can highlight without soaking through. Plus, the larger print edition lies flat, so you can teach without having to hold the book open. The Chronological Gospels larger print edition is a big and beautiful coffee table book, measuring a full 12 inches tall and nine inches wide. Study the Bible with clarity and ease. I love the size of this book. This is nine by 12. The paper is, is perfect because it doesn't bleed through when I write on it. I can mark it up and I always make notes in all my Bibles. Everything is the same place as it is on the smaller version and I can just stand back and I can teach from it and it's just, it's the perfect size. I pray thee, of whom speaks this prophet? Order the Chronological Gospels larger print edition by phone or online. You'll get 40% larger type than the original. Call 800-788-7887. That's 800-788-7887. Or get the Chronological Gospels Bible larger print edition online at arudeawakening.tv slash large. On the morning that the Passover lambs were selected, there were two loaves that were put on the wall of the temple. When the first one was removed, after that, no more leavened bread was eaten. 
When the second loaf was removed, then all of the leavened bread in the land of Israel was then burned because the Feast of Unleavened Bread was going to commence at sunset that evening. The night before, Yeshua took Artos. He took leavened bread, and he blessed the Most High in the presence of his disciples, and he interpreted the Kadosh Mikra, the holy rehearsal that Melchizedek put in place with Abraham. Yeshua said the prayer of the Melech Zadik. Barukatah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Homotzi Lechem Haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, Yehovah, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And he said, this represents my body, which is now broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Then Yeshua took the cup. And he said, Baruch Atah, Yehovah, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Berei Pri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Yehovah, our God, the King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. And then he said, you take my cup, divide it among yourselves. I will not drink a sip of the fruit of the vine till I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. So as often as we do this now, we rehearse not only his death, but we rehearse that we will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and at the marriage supper of the Lamb, he will take his cup and say, Lahaim to life everlasting. And until then, Shabbat Shalom. And welcome to episode two of The Name of God, Pure and Simple with Keith Johnson. Keith, welcome back to Shabbat Night Live. Thank you, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited. I'm glad to be here, Scott. You know, last time we were talking about our favorite Bibles, we have them up on the stage again, and I explained that uh, for, for several reasons, this was my favorite Bible, the Jerusalem Bible, a $5 secondhand Bible <laughs> I found in a secondhand right. bookstore. Yes. Uh, but one of the other reasons, as we were talking about uh, before we were starting this morning, uh, was that one of the favorite parts of this Bible to me is these missing books. We talk about the name oh. of God, pure and simple. Yes. And I think the purity of a lot of Bible has been lost because a lot of the books were taken out. Okay. Well, this Bible has the first book of Maccabees, the second oh. book of Maccabees. Oh. Yeah, which explains a lot, <laughs> right? The Ecclesiasticus yeah. in here. Uh, the book of, um, oh, where's another one here? Tobit. Uh huh. Uh, Baruch Judith, also. Baruch is in here. Yeah, yeah. So this, to me, is a really special Bible because it fills in the blanks that mm -hmm. a lot of Bibles leave out. So that's another reason why it's my favorite. Yeah, so we've got your favorite Bible, the Jerusalem Bible. We've got my grandma, Fannie Mae Hayes' Bible, which, by the way, I gotta tell you something. When I was preparing for this, I didn't know this. We've been doing some family searching. We've yeah. been looking for our family. And we couldn't find the name, believe it or not, my great-grandfather, we couldn't confirm uh, that name, though we knew the great-grandmother and the great-great-great-grandfather and all these things, and I open up the Bible and on the front page, she has his name. <laughs> so, I mean, it's pretty darn amazing. I think that it was a, it was a, a bit of a, a road sign for me, Scott. I want to go back to Exodus 6 okay. because um, we, we, we went with the notes and, and where the notes led us and, and how my grandma's Bible um, led me to Jehovah, which mm -hmm. is Yehovah, and that you've got your, uh, your translation there. Can you read Exodus 6 for us? one through three, and I wanna, I wanna do something if we can. Okay, so this is the same verse we read last Six, week. Six, one through three, okay. yes. All right. Then and you, ho everybody, ho hopefully you folks have your Bible translations, right? You're serious about this. I mean, we're having Bible study. This is in the spirit of my friend Michael, the original Bible thumper. We're having a yes. Bible study, okay? Go ahead. Yeah, so bring your Bible and read with us. Exodus 6, verse mm -hmm. one. Okay. Then Yahweh said to Moses, says my Bible, you will... See now how I shall punish Pharaoh. He will be forced to let them go. Yes, he will be forced to send them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am Yahweh to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I appeared as El Shaddai. I did not make myself, make myself known to them by my name, Yahweh. Okay, all right. Now what I'm gonna do, folks, is I've got my grandma's Bible. I'm gonna look at my Hebrew Bible, the Bible that Yeshua would have read in scroll form, he would have read it. But if we were to go to this this passage in Exodus, and you'd be reading without vowels, but you know, this is what it says in Exodus chapter 6, and I just want to translate three. Uh, it says, and I appeared to Abraham and to, uh, to Isaac and Jacob uh, by El Shaddai, but by my name, Yudhe Vafe, I did not 
And then there's a word, no da ti. I did not make myself known. Mm. Okay, now, when I see that, I do something right away. I stop and I say, okay, what is that word, no da ti? I want to know if it shows up somewhere else, and it does in a really powerful place. Three times this actual specific word shows up in this exact form in the book of Ezekiel. Oh. Now, would you go to Ezekiel for us real quick? Okay. Everyone turn to Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 9. Ezekiel 20, verse 9. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so my Ezekiel 20, verse 9, mm-hmm. says, But respect for my own name kept me from allowing it to be profaned in the opinion of the nations among whom they were living. For I had given them my word that in the sight of those nations I would lead my people out of the land of Egypt. Okay, and again, there's the word, no da ti, to make, him, mm. to make himself known. Now, If you just read that in English one more time, and I I hate to have us go over this again, but I just want you to read it one more time in Exodus chapter 20, verse 9, and look for the past. Look for anything that's referring to the past. Read it one more time. Past tense? Past tense. Okay. Something that happened in the past. Ezekiel 20, verse 9. Yes. So, but respect for my my own name kept me from allowing it to be profaned in the opinion of the nations among whom they were living. Mm -hmm. For I had given them my word that in the sight of those nations, I would lead my people out of the land of Egypt. So the past, what did he do? He led. (laughs) Mm -hmm. This is the was. This is Yehovah showing he is the was. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse nine, using that same that same exact word, no dati. 20 verse nine was. Now go to Exodus 35, 11. Exodus 35, 11. Okay. Mm-hmm. In Exodus, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 35, Ezekiel 11. 35, sorry about 11. that, folks. No problem. Ezekiel 35. Ezekiel 35, verse 11. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, very well as I live, it is the Lord Yahweh who speaks. In anger and fury, I will do exactly what you did uh, because you hated them. I shall make it clear that I am punishing you on their behalf. Mm-hmm. And it says, Hi, Ani Neum Adonai Yehovah. It says, raising his hand, he says, Right now, I am making this statement now. In other words, this is the is of Yehovah here. Mm. We have the past, what he did in Egypt. This is the is. He's raising his hands. Listen, right now I'm telling you, this is who I am right now. I'm making this statement. Read it one more time in English, nice and slow. Very well. As I live, it is. Stop. As I live. Right now. Yes. (laughs) Person (laughs) 10. Okay. So in other words, we've got the was. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 9. Mm Mm-hmm. The is, Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 11, Hmm. all from Exodus chapter 6, where it says, no dati, it only shows up three times. That Hmm. word, no dati, I I, I did not make myself known. We find the same exact form in Ezekiel 20, verse 9, was. Ezekiel 35, 11 is, now go to Ezekiel 38, 23. 23, all right. Ezekiel 38, 23 says, I mean to display my greatness and holiness and compel the many nations to acknowledge me. This is how they will learn that I am Yahweh. I'm catching on here, Keith. (laughs) You're getting it, Scott. (laughs) Let me tell you something I said to myself. Listen, I gotta get Scott. Scott's gonna be able to help me here. So we've got was, 20 verse nine, is, 35, 11, and will be in 3823. Now I could stop hmm. right there and say, okay, but it's gonna get a whole lot better. Can I do some, can I, can I, uh, permission since I'm gonna be here, hopefully you, you'll keep me here and we'll, we'll do this for a little bit. Can I share just a, a little small testimony of something that really, that really did set the stage for meeting Michael? Yeah, and it please was do. that yeah. I had a dream and in the dream, there was a scroll flying over my head. If you haven't heard it, go to michaelrood.com. Uh, Watch Shavuot 2020, where Michael allows me to tell the story in detail. But in the dream, there was a scroll rolling, flying over my head. And it says, I heard a woman's voice saying, if you can tell me where the scroll opens up, you win a million dollars. I said, Ezekiel chapter one, verse three. The scroll opens up, the end of the dream. Mm. I hear a voice, meet me in my city at the time of Shavuot. I said, we've told the story a thousand different times, several different witnesses. My best witness is Michael Rude himself. He was there when I called him and said, my name is Keith Johnson. I'm supposed to be in the city. At the time of Shavuot, he was quiet. He thought to himself, sure, come over. I go, I find Michael. What's he doing? Bible thumping in his office. 
He's Bible thumping in his office. Now, one of the things I did is I eventually went back to Ezekiel chapter one, verse three in my Hebrew Bible and something really cool shows up. Can you go to Ezekiel chapter one, verse three real quick? Yes, let's do that. Ezekiel one, verse three. Mm-hmm. All right. And read it for me nice and loud in your, in your uh, Jerusalem Bible. All right. The word of Yahweh was addressed to the priest Ezekiel, son of Buzi. In Stop. The- they missed it. That's, 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 say that one more time, the first part of the verse. Okay. The word of Yahweh was addressed to the priest Ezekiel. No, no, no. Here's what it says in Hebrew. And I'm going to read it in Hebrew if it's okay. Hey, yeah, please. Here's what it says in Hebrew uh, chapter 1, verse 3. Hayo, haya, devar, Yehovah, el, Ezekiel. Again, hayo, haya, devar, Yehovah. Literally, what that's saying is, he is, he was, the word, the matter, the thing, he was, he is, he will be. Mm. <laughs> That's what the verse actually says. Wow. The verse says, present tense, participle, hayo, haya, past tense, Yehovah, he was, he is, he will be. So I didn't, like, when I had this dream, now, come on now, Scott, I'm, this is a personal, uh, I'm asking permission to say this. I didn't know that. All I knew is I heard the voices, Ezekiel chapter one, verse three, the scroll opens up to that spot. That leads me to the place where I've been spending 20 years in the tomb of the Jewish folks of the ancient Israelites. The ancient Israelites. I come out, I look at this verse again, and I said, there it is again. He was, he is, and he shall be, regardless of pronunciation. Hmm. I would like those that are listening, and let me, I, wanna, I wanna be really clear. If you don't agree with pronunciation, please agree with this. His name means he was, he is, and he shall be. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take, and actually, I took this from my book, His Hollywood Name Revealed Again, some Bible study presentations that I put in that book so that people could know it for themselves. Three of them I want us to look at. The first one is he was. So I thought, what's a great topic for he was? Could we talk about creation? Oh, yes, let's do Would that. Would that be okay now? Yeah. Controversy, Scott. Of course, oh, it's got to be a little controversy. We don't do controversy here at Shabbat Nehemiah. Before we do uh, uh, <laughs> this, there was something that happened, uh, and well, I don't know if catch your attention or not. Something happened in the Capitol at the beginning of 2021 that caught my attention, and it wasn't January 6th. Mm. It was January 3rd. Can I play from January 3rd something that happened? It was actually the opening prayer of the 117th Congress of the United States of America. And I know a lot of people oh, have heard this about thing. this. And at the end, he says, amen, or a woman. That's not the part I want to talk about. Oh, I want to okay. go to the one minute and 50 second mark, if it's okay. Now may the God who created the world. Stop. This happens to be a United Methodist pastor. He's a congressman. For those who don't know, I announced Michael last year at Shavuot that that year before, the father finally released me from the Methodist Church. I turned in my ordination papers. I turned in everything connected to the United Methodist Church. Father finally released me from the United Methodist Church. And I got to tell you, Scott, it was a blessing for me to be completely free because I, people say, why are you still connected? Even though they probably have a most wanted thing in the bishop's office. This guy's nuts. He's talking about the name of God and the time of God and the calendars. Finally, the father releases me. In January 3rd of 2021, I got a chance to listen to Representative Emmanuel Cleaver, and he starts out and he says, to the God who created the earth. Okay, that's what he says. I want to play it. Everything in it, bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us peace, peace in our families, peace across this land. And dare I ask, O Lord, peace even in this chamber. Now, he's at this point. He says to the God who created the heavens and the earth, sounds okay to me. He starts talking about Numbers chapter six in the earlier, we just talked about the silver scrolls. May the Lord, and and, and, okay, he's not using the name, but then he does something that makes me extremely happy that I don't have to make any more excuses to be a part of the Methodist Church. He says something in the next phrase, Scott, that I really want people to hear. Can I play it? Please do. Now and evermore, we ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, 
by many different faiths. Amen? I don't even need to hear the last part. The God of creation, the most amazing blessing out of Numbers chapter 6, he uses it, and then he gets to this spot where he's reading. He says, in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma. I don't even know that name. To speak. What is it's a that? Hindu God. It's a Hindu God. A Hindu God who they give the creation to. The Hindu God, yeah, Brahma, he's the one who did the creation. This United Methodist, and I, I'm going to try to calm down, but I got chills. I got goosebumps. Well, the question he is why? He stands up, okay, he stands up at the 117th Congress, and he says, I'm going to use Numbers chapter 6. I'm going to talk about the God of creation, and then I'm going to say, may he have peace in my family, may he have peace, and may he have peace in this chamber. And he says, in the name of the monotheistic God, first of all, Brahma is not from a monotheistic religion. Many, many, many gods. And he names the name of that false God at the 117th Congress of the United States of America. And I'm saying to myself at that point, no, I've got to say, I got, no, I can't, I can't, I can't let it go. He's calling upon the name of a Hindu God using Numbers chapter 6 which obviously there's all sorts of confusion in that. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do, Scott, let me calm down. What we want to know is, is the God he's talking about, is that the God of creation? And is Yehovah related to creation? So what we want to do is we want to open our Bibles. I'll calm down. I'll calm down. We want to open our Bibles and find out, is he right? Is, I mean, is it just any God or is, is there something else? So if you can do me a favor, we're going to take a look right now at... Um, Ex uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I got a little, little. <laughs> Genesis chapter one, <laughs> verse three. Uh, if you would read that in your Bible, we're gonna find out who this God is uh, uh, in uh, Genesis chapter one, verse three. Okay, very good, I like this. We're going straight to the evidence Amen. and weighing it all out. Amen. Okay, so Genesis one, verse three says, God saw that light was good and God divided light from darkness. Mm -hmm. So what does it say in uh, most everyone else's Bible? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It gets to one verse three, and it says, and God said something. Yes. And what does it say in your Bible? Read it one more time. God saw that light was good. Am I reading the right verse? No, you're here? reading four. Read three. Oh, I'm sorry. These, the, the Bible verses in here are a little hard to track yes. here. Okay, so uh, God said, oh, I'm sorry. Let there be light, and there was light. Now, if I open up my Hebrew Bible, I see something really, really cool. Don't mind telling you about this. If I open up my Hebrew Bible, what I see is that Yehovah says the first word out of his mouth is Yehi, which is the justice, which let there be. That particular verb is based on the same verb of his name. His name, hey, yud, hey, haya, yeah, he is also based on hey, yud, hey. So I'm, I say this mm. in my book, I say maybe there was a meeting in heaven and he like make an announcement. <laughs> yeah, because I have these production meetings, right? So I was in a production meeting with Ted and Ted's got the production meeting. There's people online and everyone's all around in the room. So he called a meeting. So maybe God called a meeting and he said, hey, I'm about to share my word according uh, to my will and my way. And, uh, and maybe one of the angels said, the Father, what's going to be the first word out of your mouth? What, what's the first thing you're going to say? <laughs> and I can hear the angels in complete silence, you know, complete silence. And then he says, the first word out of my mouth is going to be based on my name. Now, in English, you don't see that. In Hebrew, it's beautiful. He <laughs> says, yeah, he or, and light, when it hears, yeah, he, light says there's no delay. <laughs> so when God says a thing, it happens. So what we find is, he, and this is in the beginning, it says, in the beginning, Bereshit bara Elohim, God created. Now, if we just stay there, how do we know which God? Hmm. How do we, may, maybe the, this guy's right. Maybe, maybe it could be this, this, this God or that God or the other God. And, and let me give you a little controversy. If we just had the word Elohim, apart from what he did, there are examples of Elohim in our Bible where it relates to judges, where it relates to false gods. But whenever Elohim is related to a singular verb, created, in the beginning, God created, it always, say always. Always. Refers to the one true God. Hmm. But the father must have thought to himself, you know, y'all might not get that. This guy might be confused. He stopped reading. I love to say to people, keep reading. So go to X, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, and we're going to make this thing really nice and clear. Two, verse Genesis four. verses 2, 
verse 4. What does it say in Genesis 2, 4? Such were the origins of heaven and earth when they were created. That's it? That's it. Read the whole verse, my friend. Again, this Bible's hard. Genesis 2, <laughs> verse, I mean, come on, are it's, you kidding? It Dick? stops in the middle. Oh, there, okay. Okay. So God, God bless the seventh day, is that where it starts? <laughs> no, okay. No? Let me read it from my grandma's Bible. Please do, yeah. Genesis 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that, and in English, it's yud Hey vav Hey god the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And what is the Lord there? It is yud Hey vav Hey, which they should have, in Genesis 2, 4, they should use... What it they is say? here. It continues in the next paragraph. They, okay, split, they split the, 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 the verse You should this is your paragraph. favorite Bible now. <laughs> I never read this, this particular verse in this Bible. I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Read the so whole verse. such were the origins of the heaven and earth when they were created at the time when Yahweh God made okay. the earth and the heavens. Okay, now this is what the Father's doing. This is what the Father's doing. What he's doing is he's saying, look, there might be a time where someone gets confused in reading just the first chapter of Genesis. Mm. There might be a time where they, where, they, where they read just the first chapter of Genesis and they, they see the word Elohim and they say, maybe that means multiple gods. Mm. Maybe, but even they don't know any grammar. The grammar says it's multiple God. No, it's the one true God connected to the verb. But in Genesis 2, 4, he says this, the one who created the, created, the, created the heavens and the earth is Elohim Yud, hey, vav, hey, or Yud, hey, vav, hey, Elohim. Yehovah ah. is the God of creation. Okay, well, this, this deserves a little more exploration, oh, yeah, so let's we, continue in yes. a minute here. All right, so we'll be right back with Keith Johnson. Thank you for making it possible. You make this possible because you support Shabbat Night Live. We're asking that you would do it again so that you can make it possible for others to see this. Thank you for doing it. We'll be right back. And thank you for your support of Shabbat Night Live. Now, in our first segment, Keith, I was stumbling <laughs> over this verse in, uh, in Genesis. Take a look on the screen here. Look at this. So look what they did. So verse four, it looks like it ends with the word created, and then they separate it with a note that says the second account of creation, paradise, and it looks like chapter, or pardon me, uh, verse five at the next line. That's actually the continuation of verse four. <laughs> exactly. And then verse five starts at that little dot before the word yeah. there. So no wonder this thing is hard to follow. It is. I still love it, though. I'll tell you what was great about that is they are, they are doing a highlight to say, just so you know, this, we're talking about creation. And the fact that they, they, they did that allows you to stop and say, okay, Genesis chapter one, Elohim, God. Now, who is God? Yehovah is the yeah. one who is God. And that's what we find in uh, Genesis chapter 2, 4. In fact, when I go back to 2002, when I opened up my Hebrew Bible, that was the first time 
that we find Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey in the Bible. Mm. The first time that Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey shows up in written form in that way is Genesis 2, 4. I would argue the first time that Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey shows up is when he speaks his name. Mm. When he, I'm sorry, when he speaks Yehi, literally everyone there knew he was, he's proclaiming his name right then. And his name is a name of action, which uh, to me, uh, I don't know about anyone else, but when I understand that, I start asking myself the question, what does it mean for me in my own personal life? So that's what we're dealing with. And let me just say this, a little controversy here. Um, the Jerusalem Bible, obviously uh, Catholic. Yeah, Catholic Bible. Catholic Bible, yeah. I did, I, I have to confess, I had a, a big big fight with the Pope um, in 2008 because the Pope, now that Bible was actually written before, uh, they did that translation before the Pope made a huge declaration. I don't know if you know about this. Oh. In 2008, I put it in my book, His Hallowed Name Revealed Again, where I argue with the Pope. In fact, I went to Rome to go talk to him. I, I literally did. I went to Rome and I had a little ticket to go and I, he came by and I went to, and he didn't answer me, but I was there. <laughs> I, the reason I did that, you think I'm kidding, I really did. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, it was Michael who, uh, who uh, encouraged me to do that because you know, he does this, he does this stuff. Michael does stuff that is so, <laughs> It's just so... So it's, Michael. It's so Michael. <laughs> in fact, he sent me a note yesterday saying, hey, I saw what you're doing there. Great job. I said, I learned from the best. Yeah. But anyway, so I went, I went there because uh, the Pope made me really angry, mm. really upset me. In fact, I'm glad you're using that Bible that was pre-Pope, pre-Pope declaration. He made a declaration in 2008. He says, it has crept into the congregation that some people are speaking the name of God. He actually wrote this. Hmm. I put the letter in the book so you can see it. His letter is in the book. He says, and listen, this should not be. We must go with the tradition that we do not speak the name of God. He says, whether it be Yahweh, whether it be Jehovah, whether it be Yehovah, we must not speak the name. And he put a whole thing out, sent to all the high bishops and all the, high, all the big hats and told all the big hats, no more speaking the, the name of God in translation, in music, in anything. And yet, he didn't do it before your Bible, so. Mm. <laughs> now, I don't understand, just let's explore that for a second, because I don't understand that. I understand where the, the Hebrew people, they had a, a prohibition of the name, yeah. but they, they, on the other side, so the, the, the Christian, the, Ro the Ro Christian Roman church mm -hmm. had a prohibition of the name as well? I mean, I don't get this, why? Where does come that come on, from? Scott, do you know why? He's called Holy Father. You can't be having some name of God, a personal name of God, I'm Dada. You know, I mean, mm. I'm the big head honcho. I'm the one that's in charge here. I mean, and if you think about it, over and over and over again, 6,827 times, according to the most accurate Hebrew Bible, the name yod heh vav -Heh shows up. If I look at my Bible, every page, two, 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 two times a page, his name is there, his name is there, his name is there. So it's all about him. Well, if you got an entire religious movement that's talking about Father, Holy Father, you know, I mean, it's, mm. I mean, it's, I mean, to me, it makes, you know, it, here's where the tradition of the Jews fit well with the, the tradition of the Christians. If we can kind of keep that personal name away, maybe no one will have a real encounter and we can do whatever we want. Mm. You know, we can do gymnastics, linguistic gymnastics, translation gymnastics. I always say to myself, I wish that they would invite me uh, to be a part of a translation. In fact, I don't know if I'm going to tell you, I should probably tell you here. I got my own translation now. Oh. Yeah, my wow. own translation. It's not for sale. I, I only let a few people hear it. It's my own translation. It's called the KJV. The KJV? <laughs> there's already a KJV. What are no, you talking about? there's the Keith Johnson version. What are you talking about? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's move on. I Psalms 124, it. verse Great. 8. Would you turn to <laughs> Psalms? And, and my translation, honestly, and I mean this in sincerity, I, I'm, I'm spending some time <laughs> with, uh, with uh, Rabbi David Dr. Uh, um, uh, Rabbi Dr. David Moster. From, he has this PhD from uh, uh, bar Ilan University. Uh, and I've been doing an intensive with him uh, just to have some sharpening of the iron. And uh, it's really amazing because I told him, you know, what, what I want him to do is I want him to challenge me if I leave the farm. And what he said to me, and this is really powerful for me, what's great about the living translations is the living translations try to communicate. The what's problem with the living translations is they don't go to the source. They, they, they kind of get mm -hmm. so loose they leave the farm. What I like to do is let this be the source and then do a translation that you and I can understand. 
So I, I really don't have my own translation, but I call it the KJV. <laughs> Go to Psalms chapter 124, yep. verse 8, and read it nice and loud for us. We're dealing with the issue of the creator of the universe himself who shows up in creation. Now, in fact, before you read that, Scott, testify for me a little bit. Um, how did you even, you know, get concerned? Can you, before you read this, about the Bible, I mean, what, did you did you always know about a Bible? Did you always have a Bible? What was your? I had a, a much different upbringing than you. So I, I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. So I uh, went to a Baptist church when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and then, uh, like I said, the Mennonite high school, things like that, and then uh, young adulthood. Pentecostal church, mm -hmm. and then after that, that's where we found our Hebrew roots, and then we really? went from How there. long ago was that? Well, that was uh, 15 years ago, when I son, my son was about two, so yeah, 15, 16 years ago. And so do you, so in terms of reading the Bible, do you find yourself still being, I mean, obviously this is your favorite translation, do you try to use other translations also? Oh yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, I didn't get this Bible until just four or five years ago. Okay. But uh, yeah, I used other things. Like I said, the NIV was uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, uh, mom and dad always had uh, King James sitting around, maybe mm -hmm. uh, NASB, things like that. Okay, excellent. Okay, mm -hmm. so we, we go ahead now. Now, Psalms chapter 124, verse eight. And if you could read that for us. Certainly, okay. He tore the net and we uh, tore the net and we escaped. Our help is Psalms. in Psalms. Okay, I'll yep. make sure. <laughs> yes, Again, this is Bible. I'm like, wait a minute. That's, like that's, that's the wrong verse. The, <laughs> okay. It's the last half of seven, I guess. So let's. <laughs> I don't understand this thing. Go ahead. Okay. okay. <laughs> Our help is in the name of Stop. Yahweh. We need help right now. Yes. <laughs> help me read this Bible. Go ahead. Our help is in the name of Yahweh who made heaven and, and earth. And of course, if we open the Hebrew Bible, it says our help is in the name of Yehovah uh, who made heaven and earth. And, and we find these verses over and over and over again that he is God of creation. And for the pagans, and I think this is something that we would, I don't know what your experience has been that. I mean, you're, you happen to be in a, an arena. Can I stop real quick? I've been blessed with you, Scott, because I've watched a few of your um, health awakening uh, shows where you're talking about um, health and the body. And yesterday you sat down and, and blessed all of us that were sitting there. We kind of all felt guilty after we talked to you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we were excited because you were teaching us what, what happens in our body when we, when we do and when we use certain things, right. correct? Mm -hmm. But in that arena, do you find that there are people that tend to be even a little bit more um, liberal regarding their, uh, I'm not talking about you, of course, but I'm talking about people that are in the health arena. Like I'll go into a health store and it seems like everything is kind of, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, Very new age. Yeah, okay, now tell yeah. me about that. I mean, how does that, I mean, how do you? That's what got us actually to a rude awakening. Uh, in, in, a, in a long story short, I mean, when we first started this thing back in Canada, my mm -hmm. wife and I, uh, we found that we like the idea of all of this, except we found that all of the leaders of uh, of the health movement who were talking about things we'd like to get into were all very new age, and there was a Mother Earth and all this type of thing. You know, it's of, almost like we had a pre-production meeting. We didn't, did we? No, no, no. And, I'm and then, giving you the softball, so exactly. Did that not happen? Yeah, so it? instead of being the name of Yahweh who created the heaven and the earth, they worshiped the heaven, or the, just the earth. They worshiped right. the earth, that's right? right? That's right, that's yeah. right, that's right. So you've had experience with those types of people. Oh yeah, and that's what got us, we said, no, no, we don't want this. We want at least a Christian yeah, so you're taking, you're, but you're still taking health, mm -hmm. and you're you're saying this is health, this is our body, and who created our body? The creator of the universe, and who is the creator of the universe? And what it tells us in the Genesis two four, it is Yehovah. He is the creator mm -hmm. of the universe. Psalms one twenty four eight. He is the one. Can you also read for me Psalms thirty three? Verse six. That's a good question. We'll see how it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what it is. I'm but... throwing it that way. Thirty-three <laughs> six. Psalms thirty-three six. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here, this one's a little easier. It starts actually where it's supposed to start. Mm. Uh, by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made; their whole array by the breath of His mouth. That's just amazing. That's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So here He is, <sighs> Yehovah Himself. You know, the one who was, the one who is, the one who shall be, and just from His mouth. Just from his mouth, creation. And again, this is where it gets exciting to me, Scott, because what I'm what I'm doing right now, obviously, is we have our Hebrew Bible and we can see over and over again his name coming out, the grammatical issues. It's amazing. In fact, uh, we'll do something later. We'll, 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 we'll go even deeper into some aspects of the Hebrew Bible that, that just show something amazing about another example of a different pronunciation mm. for God's name. But for this one, for what we know, yud Hey vav Hey, he is the one that through his mouth brought forth creation. I mean, just what he says. I mean, who, who is this God? I mean, who is this God? So by the word of Yehovah, the heavens were made, 
and by the breath of his mouth, all of their host. Now, I want to do something, if we can, and I, I, I hope we have time for it. In the back of this book, I did something really interesting. What I did is I found 40 different examples of Yehovah's name connected to a Hebrew word of purpose, okay. a Hebrew word of action, a Hebrew word of description. And one of them, and I want you to turn with you, if you would, to, uh, I believe it is, yep, I have it right here. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5. Everyone turn to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5. 42, verse 5. Okay, mm -hmm. here it is. Thus says God, Yahweh, mm -hmm. he who created the heavens and spread them out, who gave shape to the earth and what comes from it, mm -hmm. who gave breath to its people mm -hmm. and life to the creatures that move in it. This is so amazing. So what I did is I pulled from that verse uh, the phrase, the one who created. Now that is a grammatical form. There's a word.